Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. For those of you who really know Commander Cody well, then this recent scene in the Bad Batch probably has a deeper meaning for you. Rumors are more and more clones have been questioning the Order. Then they are traitors, like the Jedi. Traitors, just like the Jedi. I mean, look at how Commander Cody looks at Crosshair here. Commander Cody clearly is no longer thinking about all of the clones who are disobeying the orders the Empire is giving them. He's now just thinking about the Jedi, and specifically one Jedi, an individual who became his mentor and close friend. I, of course, am talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi, and the last time Commander Cody saw him, well, he had ordered an ATTE to fire at him. Order 66. You know it makes us different from battle droids? We make our own decisions, our own choices. And we have to live with them too. Spoiler alert for season two, episode three of The Bad Batch. Now at the end of the episode, Commander Cody goes AWOL from the Imperial military, something that we suspected would happen weeks ago. It was a pretty easy prediction to make. We basically considered the moral fiber and intelligence of the man, and we came to the conclusion that Commander Cody would not last long within the Imperial military. He just wouldn't be able to stand for all of the terrible things he's seeing. Today, I wanna to take a deeper dive into Commander Cody's relationship with his General Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm pretty sure the clone has had plenty of time to reflect on what's happened during Order 66, and I kinda of wanna get more into his mindset. But before we continue, a quick word from our sponsor for today's video, Star Trek Fleet Command. It's a free-to-play open-world MMO set in our galaxy, and not the one far, far away. You command a starbase and are in charge of expanding your territory and eliminating any hostiles. Build your own unique fleet using several famous Star Trek ship designs and staff those ships with legendary Star Trek officers and bridge crews. Star Trek Fleet Command is always introducing new elements to the gameplay, like the recently added recruitable fleet commander. These are Star Trek heroes and villains who all have different leadership strategies and provide buffs to make your forces even more powerful. And right now, in January, the Borg are back and trying to assimilate everyone. If you guys are interested in partaking in this mission and stopping them, check out the description below for more information. We'll have a link to the game. Also, you can scan that QR code that's in the corner of the screen. Thank you for your patience. On to the rest of the video. When you talk about clones, there are some baseline personality attributes that almost all clones share because they do come from the same genetic material. So from a nature standpoint, they are identical. From a nurture point, well, that is where we see all the differences in personality between the millions and millions of clones. And for clones like Cody, he'll only have one true mentor, and that was the Jedi General that he would be paired with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Unlike other clones, Commander Cody being a clone commander had no clone superiors. He was used to giving orders uh, not receiving them. Clone commanders would be placed in charge of a regiment size unit, which usually consisted of around 2,300 clone troopers. Commander Cody had been trained all his short life to lead those men onto the battlefield, but nothing had really prepared him for the other part of his job, which was actually acting as a liaison between the Jedi generals he worked beneath and the clone troopers who followed his command. This was a really chaotic and difficult job. Remember, the clones and the Jedi really didn't know anything about each other. They were just pushed into this situation once the Battle of Genosis started. There was no actual planning. And so Commander Cody immediately had to figure out how to you know, make the Jedi generals more empathetic of the clone situation. And at the same time, he had to follow the Jedi's orders to the best of his capabilities, meanwhile preserving as many clone lives as possible, because sometimes those orders were really bad. The clone army would quickly realize after Geonosis that although individual Jedi Knights could be near invincible on the battlefield, many of them were completely untrained in how to lead soldiers onto the battlefield. Luckily, Obi-Wan Kenobi had always been an avid student, a very open-minded individual who understood his own limitations, and so if he didn't understand something, he would allow someone like Commander Cody to take charge. And this was really smart because Obi-Wan Kenobi had very little command experience prior to the Clone Wars, and so he was pretty comfortable with letting officers like Commander Cody handle the tactical approach to a target, while he focused more on larger picture issues like how to win the actual battle. During a series of battles against the Separatists on Christophus, Obi-Wan Kenobi pulls off a slightly unorthodox method of winning a battle. He basically calls for parlay with his opponent, General Worm Loathsome. Kenobi would proceed to use the flag of truce to kidnap the enemy officer and force the Separatist destroyed army to stand down. This would be a really interesting lesson for Commander Cody to learn from because Obi-Wan Kenobi was a 
you know, very straight shooter. He was always by the books in how he approached the battlefield. He was eager to learn the proper ways of command before, you know, trying his own new thing. He oftentimes refused to take the same risk that more aggressive Jedi leaders like Anakin Skywalker would take. And so Obi-Wan Kenobi was kind of this mixed personality. You did have this very slow, methodical, and conservative type of commander who would often occasionally do really wild and out-of-the-box things to keep the enemy guessing. And this really fits the description of who Commander Cody would become as an officer as well. He was a by-the-books type of leader who would occasionally call on units like the Bad Batch if the traditional way of doing things just wasn't working. The Jedi and their clones were supposed to maintain a professional distance from one another, and it's pretty clear that Obi-Wan Kenobi and Commander Cody try to do this, but they also definitely have feelings for one another. I mean, you can't serve on a battlefield face, you know, a huge amounts of death and destruction without developing bond with the people you serve next to. During the second battle of Geonosis, Commander Cody would send a rescue squad to recover Kenobi after his dropship had been shot down. During the Battle of Urbana, Obi-Wan Kenobi would literally slice an incoming artillery round in half, saving his clone commander's life. These are choices that both individual made. It wasn't a part of the mission. It was just a decision based on prior experiences, good experiences these two had with each other. And as we can all tell, Commander Cody and a lot of the more awake clones like Fives and Rex believes that clones should have self-determination, make their own choices. When Order 66 occurred, Commander Cody, like all of the other clones, had an inhibitor chip in his brain. When properly functioning, these chips were able to completely take control of a clone's actions. To make matters worse for Cody, he was personally contacted by Emperor Palpatine to carry out Order 66. The Sith Lord was known for his manipulative abilities, which were oftentimes enhanced by the dark side of the Force. So it's not really surprising that Commander Cody would immediately turn to the ATTE walker behind him and order it to fire on his friend. I mean, Captain Rex, another clone that is held in high regard by many of the fans, could not help himself during Order 66 and needed to be knocked out by Ahsoka Tano, otherwise the clone would have killed her. Such was the power of this chip. The Captain Rex, in his defense, knew Clone Trooper 5's Tup and the rest of the clones who were involved with the discovery of the inhibitor chips. Captain Rex at least had some background information about what was going on and managed to pass on that information to Ahsoka before he tries to kill her. Whether Commander Cody knows about this secret plot to take out the Jedi using clones is a bit more uncertain. He clearly had links with Captain Rex, and as the war went on longer, Commander Cody developed all sorts of contacts and links with other commanders and units like Clone Force 99. Information about the inhibitor chips, though, was extremely, extremely dangerous. For instance, 501st Legion medic Kicks, who had simply encountered Fives while he was trying to warn the Republic about the chips inside of the clones' heads, would actually draw the attention of the Sith, and he would be captured by Dooku's separate destroyed forces because of it. What's far more likely is that Commander Cody knew about the biochips that was found inside of Tup's brain and every clone's brain. But Commander Cody, like all the other clones, most likely would have bought the official Kaminoan narrative, which was this. That is a structural inhibitor chip, which is supposed to prevent you from being aggressive, like your source, Jango Fett. This, of course, was a lie. The inhibitor chip was far more powerful than the Kaminoans led on, and could block and send signals to the brain, forcing the clones to act more like droids than humans. And so when Order 66 happens, Commander Cody basically forgets his entire relationship with Kenobi, everything he knows about this man and how solid of a human being he is, and suddenly sees red. He's a traitor, and so he tries to kill him. After Cody witnessed the Jedi fall from those heights, he would still be in a trance, and so he would order his clone troopers to search for Kenobi's body, which of course they never find. But I'm pretty sure in the following days after that, as the inhibitor chip starts wearing off, he'll become increasingly confused by his own actions. As long as he doesn't have amnesia, Cody will remember ordering the ATTE to fire on Kenobi without any hesitation. And he'll feel really confused about this. I mean, Commander Cody is not some ruthless killer. He's not some emotional wreck. He's an individual who thinks first and then shoots later. You guys remember the scene where Twani Ames surrenders to Commander Cody peacefully and Imperial Governor Groton immediately tells him to gun down Ames? Cody hesitates. He's honorable and he doesn't just take the shot without thinking. This is who he is as a person. This is the kind of person Obi-Wan Kenobi taught him to be. On top of that, Commander Cody's biggest pet peeve in life is watching clones die needless deaths because their commanders were careless or ill-prepared. And General Obi-Wan Kenobi always made sure to keep his men safe, even if that meant less aggressive tactics and slower victories. 
This is why Cody and Kenobi got along so well. They had, you know, shared goals of keeping as many clones alive as possible. So as he relives this moment where he orders that tank to fire on his former friend and mentor, he's probably really upset about it. He probably feels somewhat violated if he understands that it was the chip that made him do this. There's one thing that Cody hated more than unnecessary friendly casualties, and that was traitors. Now, Obi-Wan Kenobi had been labeled a traitor, but Commander Cody had a really close relationship with Kenobi, and so it's hard to believe that he wouldn't at least try to talk to Kenobi before trying to kill him. Commander Cody is just not a very emotional person. He's methodical in his approach, and he strategizes before he acts. And so I think Commander Cody feels extremely guilty about Order 66, and I think that guilt will only increase as uh, the inhibitor chips continue to wear off. This new empire. Are we making the galaxy better? Has the galaxy truly become a more peaceful place since Order 66 was carried out and the Clone Wars was ended? Or is Commander Cody watching in horror as his clones, his men, are turning into the exact force that they had been trained to fight against during the Clone Wars? The Empire was clearly not welcomed on worlds like Dessex. The Empire clearly did not play by the rules. It did not believe in fairness or justice procedure. It stands against everything that Obi-Wan Kenobi stood for, and because Obi-Wan Kenobi stood for it, Commander Cody also stands for those same things. And so, of course, he would find the Empire revolting. What Palpatine failed to understand in the long run was that by keeping the clones close to the Jedi so that they can eventually betray them, many clones would also be heavily affected and changed by the Jedi. And although these clones will carry out Order 66 obediently, in the weeks that follows, they'll probably awaken to this huge tragedy and horror they've committed. And this will create a lot of clones who are unhappy at the Empire. I'm really happy that we're revisiting Commander Cody's story. I always believe that, you know, his story kind of ended in a weird way. Um, from the very beginning, I always saw Commander Cody as one of the most stand-up clones in all of the GAR. It only made sense to me that Cody would eventually reject the Empire and what it stood for. And that's because while Kamino you know, provided all of the training, armor, and weapons Commander Cody needed to survive on the battlefield, it was Obi-Wan Kenobi who taught Cody how to be a man. I'm hoping in the next few episodes that Commander Cody will eventually reunite with Captain Rex and the Bad Batch. He has connections with both groups that run pretty deep. I also think a reunion with Obi-Wan Kenobi somewhere down the road is not necessarily impossible. I mean, things are a bit chaotic right now, and I think, you know, Kenobi's probably laying low for a few years here. But around two decades later, Ezra Bridger would actually run into the old Jedi Master on Tatooine. And at the time, Ezra and Captain Rex were working together, so there is a connection there. I think personally, it would be amazing to see this old clone commander reunite with his old Clone Wars general. I think there are a lot of words that need to be spoken between these two individuals. And I think Obi-Wan Kenobi would completely forgive Commander Cody for, you know, blowing him up. Kenobi still seems to have a soft spot for clones. He probably realizes that they were pawns in this game as much as anyone else. So there you have it, guys. That is my analysis of the relationship between Commander Cody and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Let me know in the comments section below what you want to see with the Commander Cody arc in the Bad Batch. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy.